So um, what you're looking at behind me, I've actually been running for the last three days, and this is the shortened version of it, but it ran kind of over three hours. And uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it. So um, forests are responsible for kind of a third of the Earth's oxygen. They enable us to breathe. What we breathe out, they grow on. We're learning a lot about forests. We've been hearing a lot about nature the last couple of days, and I just want to add to that conversation a little bit. Um, this is actually back in March 2020, March 15th, 2020. And the trees were really bare. The future felt pretty bleak to all of us. We had separated from each other to avoid a virus circulating through breath. We slowed down, but the forest continued at its usual pace. And like a lot of us, I don't know how you guys felt, but for me, at the beginning of the pandemic, I felt like I needed to do something, like I needed to be productive. And one of the many things I did was I just put up a camera right outside my house and, uh, and had it take a frame every few seconds. And um, when Jeff asked me to come out and show some work here, I had remembered that I'd done that because I had no real intention or ambition with it. But when I played it back a few weeks ago, it looked like that. And it felt like the kind of frenetic pace we all felt. And uh, it really felt like the panic of that moment. So to make it relevant, we ran it through this AI that interpolated the frames between, and it created this sense of fluidity. And now it looked to me like the trees were kind of breathing. And I wish I could tell you I had this big idea about this. I didn't. This happened just out of kind of a technical thing. And I realized that the whole collective experience that we'd all had was about breath. And this little exercise that I hadn't even really had an ambition for, like I said, uh, really made this visible for me. And uh, something that we all experience as human beings, we could understand through a non-human subject, which is a lot of what my work is about. So I'm going to share a piece that I made just for you that I'm showing for the first time tonight. But before that, I just wanted to quickly bring you into my larger body of work, which is about presenting other forms of life in new ways. And maybe that feeling the non-human can help us understand ourselves in relation, in relation to the rest of nature. So what I try to do is to create this sense of intimacy through making a kind of a space. And I'm going to try and articulate it, but it's actually about nonverbal things. So it's a little weird. But I think of it like a space where things get really, really quiet, and it's out of durational time. I make these incredibly detailed images, as, as I hope you can see on this screen. And the animals are presented in life scale. Like the one on the right is actually 17 feet tall. Um, and unfortunately, there's no camera in the world that can create this resolution. So I have this incredibly annoying, arduous process of capturing tons of frames and then reassembling it together to show it to you in a composite final image that shows it at the resolution, maybe even beyond what, what we see in, in normal life. And I think about it like a kind of radical naturalism, where there's a surface that draws you in just long enough, kind of like a beauty trap, that gets you to slow down for a second, and then you can create this connection. One of the things that, um, I can't believe I'm talking over pictures, but one of the things I truly love about the tools of image making is how we can control time. So I'm just going to talk about that for a second, and how when we apply certain tools for looking, that can affect our experience of a subject. Maybe we can freeze a moment that happens way too fast for us to catch. I hope you're plotting for the owl. Um, <laughs> this is just an example of how we use many, many frames to slow something down to see how a subject moves. Or to feel a moment within the life cycle, but on our own time and in our own space. So 
what a lot of it is about for me is that to understand something, I need to feel it. I think we all do. And I think we need more opportunities to feel nature in a new way, to share a space that's sort of out of time. Where maybe what we share becomes visible and what we share doesn't need to be human to be felt. This is about consciousness and I really don't think that consciousness is just a human phenomena. So, I think about that a lot. Feeling moves faster than logic. And after these few days of talks and experiences in this room and all the other spaces with each other, I just wanted to leave you with a piece, like I said, that I had just finished, literally Wednesday night, or last week. The score is by um, a good friend of mine, Emil Haney, if anyone's familiar with his work, a brilliant musician who jumped on to do this with me. It's about beauty, it's about fragility, and it's about grace, and the extraordinary mechanics of nature. Thank you. <laughs>